Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Ottawa Experts. I'm your host, Moni Dujeji. And on tonight's show, we are going to speak about permaculture. Now, if you're someone who is interested in learning about how to build an ecologically friendly home, or you're thinking about growing your own food in a way that respects nature, the earth, and all of its creatures, or you're simply interested in reducing your environmental footprint, well, this is a show that I think you're going to be very interested in. My guests tonight are here to give you strategies for how to do just that. With me in the studio are Douglas Barnes, and Brittany Boychuk. Now, Douglas is a permaculture designer who studied permaculture in Australia under founder Bill Mollison and has worked on projects in Australia, in Japan, in Canada, and in India. He teaches a permaculture design certificate course with the Permaculture Institute of Eastern Ontario. He teaches water harvesting earthworks courses in various locations in Ontario, and he has a number of online courses on his website as well. Welcome, Douglas. And Brittany, who, Brittany was a child who loved the feeling of mud between her toes and she was telling me before she still does and wondering what makes a seed grow and counting the stars. And now Brittany spends her life educating people through playing, through sharing and discovering in nature. Previously a government worker, Brittany and her partner met in a perma permaculture design course. Was that your course? Yes. That they met in? Well, look at that. That's one. You can find love in permaculture. That's wonderful. And together, her and her partner inspire people through simple actions that they can take to meet their needs while healing the earth. Once again, welcome to both of you. Now, do you want to tell me a little bit about yourselves? How about you? Let me start with you, Brittany. Tell me a little bit about your story and what got you interested in, uh, in permaculture. Permaculture. Oh, boy. So... Uh... <laughs> Uh, long story short, I was in psychology in university and then I took environmental studies because I felt psychology might be a little depressing. <laughs> environmental studies I thought was going to teach me about uh, how to save the earth and you know the relationships between plants and animals. Instead it taught me about deforestation, climate change, pollution, all that stuff which was quite depressing. <laughs> yes. So I ended up uh, in the government uh, working in environmental policy and uh, and it was fantastic. It taught me a lot of really amazing things. I had there's a lot of really great people there. And um, but I needed I needed to get my hands dirty. Uh, I needed to be actively working outside with people instead of behind okay. the computer screen helping other people do that. So. And so that's how you started. You, you took a course with Douglas. Yes. Okay, Douglas. And our other yes. teachers, Bonita and Sebastian. Okay. And so tell me, what got you interested in, perma, in permaculture, Douglas? How did you begin? It, it was 1998, okay. and I'm watching, I'm living in Japan, I'm watching the Discovery Channel there, and an okay. um, Australian-produced show comes on. They got this funny old guy in bare feet walking around his farm, showing all of these cool systems that he'd okay. designed and built. I thought, oh, that's really neat. So I bought this huge book, about 700 pages, and it came, and I flipped through. This is amazing. I don't understand this. Oh. <laughs> and I put it on the shelf for a number of years, and then in 2004, still in Japan, I had a health crisis. Oh. And while I was in hospital, I thought, well, I had some scares. You know, uh, I thought, okay, well, what am I actually doing with my life? And mm. here's vaguely what I want to do. And did some soul searching and then I remembered oh there's this book on the shelf and I <laughs> dusted it off and started looking at permaculture and oh there's people who teach this and there's people who teach oh it comes from Australia I'll go to Australia well and, you were in Japan right so uh, Japan to Australia you wouldn't is not a big as a hop and a jump away I imagine <laughs> true, enough, true <laughs> enough so I did a course in 2004 and then a course again in 2005 both in Australia and really haven't looked back since then. I've just been hooked. Okay. So. And you apply those principles that we're going to talk about in your own home as well, yes. that you have built yourself. Yes. Okay. Well, let's start with a, a definition. So many people will never have heard the term permaculture. So can you define that for me? Let's start with you. Can you tell me what permaculture is? I will, but only after I tell you what sustainable means. Okay. Well, because we are talking about sustainable living strategies. Okay. So what does sustainable mean? Because that's a very good question as well. A sustainable system yeah. is one that captures and stores more energy over the lifetime of that system okay. than was used in the creation and maintenance of that system. Okay. So you can think of a bank account or a business. Okay. The business has to generate more money than it spends. Energy is our, is our commerce here. Okay. So permaculture is 
designing sustainable human systems. It's a system of design for design, designing sustainable human systems. Okay. Now, what are the elements of permaculture then? Is it just about building houses or agriculture? Is there more to it than that? What, what, does, it, what does it involve? What it, does it encompass? It's looking at meeting human needs. Okay. So you have first and foremost material needs that you need to meet. Okay. Food, water, waste management systems, shelter. Okay. Then it kind of at the high end, the more difficult end, it starts looking at social systems and oh, wow. developing community systems. Okay, okay. Did you want to add to that as well, Brittany? Sure, yeah. yeah. So, I, I mean, for myself, I tend to define it a little bit differently. It seems permaculture has a lot of definitions. Some are very much wrong. Yes. And then there's a lot that are kind of right. Okay. <laughs> it's a difficult, uh, it's a difficult term. Yes. For myself, uh... So, well, let me start. What's a wrong definition of permaculture? Oh, boy. I can't think of an example. Okay, well, give me that. It's organic gardening. Yeah, yeah, because yeah, you know what, exactly. that's, that's yeah. exactly what I thought it was until I started to, I just yeah. started just organic gardening and, yeah. you know, how to plant things together and that's yeah. it. But it, it's obviously much, much more than that. Yeah. So what so, is it to you? Uh, so to me, um, uh, one of our other permaculture teachers, I heard her recently describe it as uh, a decision-making model that uses the principles of nature. So okay. in other words, making all of your daily decisions, because in a sense, I mean, it is design, mm -hmm. but in a sense, design is a lot of decisions, a lot right. of decision making around that. So uh, making all of your decisions based on the principles found in nature, the, the lessons we can learn by watching and observing nature. Okay. Uh, so that that's how I like to define it, um, but Douglas's uh, yeah. definition is uh, also very accurate. I tend <laughs> to be analytical too, and I, I like to have a metric. Yeah, sure. So. Because a lot, I think a lot of viewers who are here will also want to kind of understand it from your perspective as well. Um, so why do we need this method? Why do we need these strategies on this way of sustainable living? Why is that important? What's wrong with what we've been doing up until now? I think everybody kind of knows on their heart, even if they're in denial. I think on some level we know, you know, climate change is real. And we are uh, taking away most of the big forests of the earth, including ones that have been there for thousands of years. And um, people who don't believe the icebergs actually are melting and the permafrost right. is melting and it's changing the way of life for not just people, or sorry, not just the polar bears, but also people. Right. Um, and I mean, there's, I think there's something wrong that you know, a lot of people say, oh, I would never swim in the Ottawa River, because we used to be able to drink that. Right. And so I think okay. intuitively, everybody kind of understands why we need permaculture. It's just, when you think about it, it's very scary to think about all the problems in the world and how okay. on earth we can possibly begin to to heal that. And so what you're suggesting is that this is a way to get back in communion with nature in relationship with nature, if yeah. I'm understanding you correctly. Yeah, so yeah. meeting our own needs, but working with nature rather than against it. Okay. There's no reason that we have to be um, almost fighting with nature or dominating right. it. Uh, we can meet our needs while also meeting nature's needs. Or right. in other words, we can't meet our own needs unless nature's needs are met. Okay. Oh, that's a good way of putting it as well. So rather than going in with my idea of I want to build my house here no matter mm -hmm. what, so you, the per permaculture or the strategies would say, well, let's just study and look at what is here first before we... the good spot to do it. Okay, okay. Do you yeah. want to add on to why you think this is all important? Like why, why we need to re-examine? Yeah, I think we Brittany hit a lot of that. I mean, 60% yeah. of the Earth, the Earth's surface, you know, yes. we've claimed for our own. Mm -hmm. And haven't been very good stewards. There's a lot of damage that's been done. Mm -hmm. So really, um, right now, you're sitting in the ecosystem. Okay. You're in it right now. You're a part of it. Now, what kind of a part are you going to be? A yeah. dis are you going to set off a destructive cycle or a virtuous cycle? Right. You can do both, and it doesn't really change your quality of lifestyle so much. You know, you're not giving up something to be somebody who's having a net benefit on the earth mm -hmm. as opposed to a consumer that's, you know, damaging the earth. So mm -hmm. it, it's actually quite easy. You know, if you think about what we've done to the earth over millennia, yeah. 
lots and lots of damage. You get really depressed. And you say, oh my God, all of this time and all of this energy that we've spent. Yeah, all of that time and energy. Right. But as soon as you start patterning with nature as a partner, mm -hmm. bam, as soon as the rain falls, things start to change. And so when you use the word patterning, what do you refer to? Like you're patterning with nature, what does that mean? You are doing something that works within natural principles. Okay. And you are not fighting against nature, you're just becoming a partner, you're cooperating. You're cooperating. Yeah. Okay, so what are some of these principles of permaculture? Can you uh, explain some of those? First one, I suppose, is uh, observe and work with nature. Observe and work with nature. I think for <laughs> city, some city folks like myself here, um, I think I can observe, but I, I'm not sure what I would get out of it mm -hmm. <laughs> to be able to take action. Well, you that's, know what I mean? that's part of the, the observation mm -hmm. is eventually you just subconsciously start picking up on patterns. You start realizing, huh, the pigeons are always on that corner of the building over there. I wonder why. Okay. But how I mean, do you explain that? Like, how do you say, okay, <laughs> okay, I'm no, so I'm noticing and I'm aware um, as a first step. That's but then how step. do you begin to interpret that? Because I can say, huh, I have an anthill over here that seems to come back every year. What does that mean? Like, I, I think people, I think people are pretty good at observing, but then it's like, well, surprised. what? Really? Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> people miss a lot. Okay. I, st I as an exercise, have yes. stood in the middle of my front yard and close to downtown Ottawa okay. for 30 minutes. And about 25 people walked by. Yes. The adults, not a single one of them noticed me. Okay. The dogs, who'd been trained to go on a single path, right. about 50% of them noticed me and were like, well, what's going on? <laughs> and almost all of the babies, I'd say 95% of the babies noticed me. Okay. And they would just do this. And you were just standing there with no other just intention? Standing just standing there. Just standing Saying there. Saying good morning see. or anything? No, no, no. Just, just to see if people noticed me. Okay. And the purpose of the exercise was? To um, observe people's awareness. Okay. If you can, if you can map, uh, how to put that? If you can hide yourself in plain sight, yes. you can blend into nature in a way that you're not going to be setting off disturbances. Okay. Uh, for instance, the chickadee. Um, this is uh, one of my favorite examples. We've named the chickadee after its warning sound. Okay. Chickadees say chickadee dee 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 when they are saying danger, danger, everybody be aware. And yes. they're like, oh, cute chickadee. Right. It's kind of like na the chickadees being like, oh, look, there goes the wee 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 wee. <laughs> and, and yeah, so I mean, <laughs> it takes a long time. Observation is not just watching once, it's watching over a period of time, it's watching through the seasons, it's watching through the not just the morning but also the night. Um, and it doesn't have to be for hours, but it can just be regular little intervals, five minutes here, one minute there, just noticing everything on your way to work, for instance. And do you, do you recommend that people like begin to write that down? Like Ooh, to, yeah. okay. It helps. I mean, you don't have to, but it helps. And what are you looking for? Like, okay, I'll let well, you. Well, I, I was just going to say that's yeah. one of the really relaxing things, calming things I find about design. Okay. Is that you're always wrong. <laughs> so, so get over it. Get okay. over it. Okay. You, you try to create a goal to get at what it is you really want. And that's kind of the key problem that most people have with everything they do is they don't really understand what it is they want and why. Mm. So you're like a little kid. You're always asking, well, why do I want that? Oh, I want that because of that. Well, why do I want that? And you're just going deeper and deeper to try to get at the kernel of what it is you're after. Okay. And then, if you ever find out what you actually want, you develop a plan mm. to get it. There's one thing I can guarantee you, your plan is wrong. So relax. Your plan's wrong. Okay. You just continue with your plan. You find out you're wrong. You adjust to the feedback. Okay, and so the, the idea of, of observing is to, to, be, is to take that first step towards becoming a partner in your existing environment. Now, that brings up the question for me of, is this something, are these principles things that you can only apply, say, out if you live out in nature, like out on a farm, or can you actually do this in the city? Where, you know, we're, we're part of nature too, so okay. that's uh, part of my observation exercise of watching people in my neighborhood go yeah. by. Uh, I hope none of them are watching right now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm creepy. But, um, but uh, I mean, we're nature too, so observing ourselves, observing our family members, observing how our community reacts to crisis or any of that stuff. There's, um, okay. So I, I, I tend to be more on the social permaculture side of things. Okay. So that 
What does that mean, the social, per social uh, permaculture? What does that mean? Uh, well, again, decision making based on the principles of nature. So you don't just okay. have to apply it to your gardens. You can also, uh, let's see, one of the really good principles that I like yes. is um, uh, mutually beneficial relationships. Um, and so that would mean, for instance, uh, uh, I run kids camps okay. out in nature. Okay. Um, my partner does as well, but we also needed some help. We also happen to have an herbalist friend who took the same permaculture course. And uh, instead of competing with her, because she also runs kids camps, right. we've collaborated. And we're starting to find more and more people throughout the city doing kids camps, like uh, the Earth Path Briarly, for instance. Um, we're starting to look for ways that we can collaborate so we can all get more kids out in nature while still okay. delivering on that quality. So instead of competing, collaborating. Okay. And in a sense, if you look at forest ecosystems, yes. um, that, that is how, how they operate. Okay. We always think survival of the fittest, yes. but it's survival of the most resilient community. And so some, how to put that, my cat has his needs met, yes. so he will get as close as he can to a squirrel and sit there and purr because he has absolutely no desire to. He's a weird cat, <laughs> frankly. but but. <laughs> There's all sorts of interspecies relationships mm -hmm. that form that you would think, uh, you know, they should be in a predatory relationship, but they're not necessarily. We all see those cute videos on exactly. on the internet, and exactly. in the end of the day, when we don't have our needs met, we are going to take from others, and that is the mm -hmm. cycle of life. But most of the time, we do have time to be kind to one another. We don't have to live okay. with that scarcity mentality. Interesting. Do you want to add on to that one for me? Well, I think yeah, the beneficial relationships are really kind of kind of the acknowledgement that you're dealing with complex systems. Okay. So a complex system is one with mm. interconnected agents that create some sort of a nonlinear outcome. Uh, you have to forgive me, I've been adapting complexity okay. theory to permaculture a lot lately. Okay. So really it's, it's the recognition that there are no isolated units. So I tend to be more on the mm. farm design end of things than the okay. urban stuff. Mm -hmm. okay. And one of the first things we do is break up this isolated pattern that, mm. that farmers traditionally use. Mm. Chickens here, we've, mm -hmm. if it's a mixed farm, we've got chickens, we've got goats, we've got cattle. Every element has its own little spot. Right. And it's built for the ease of the human mind to understand. It's got <laughs> nothing to do with the way these animals behave in nature and interact in their environment. Oh, how interesting. See, I, I didn't appreciate that. So you're saying then, um, for example, on the farm example that you're using, rather than now looking at, you know, creating groups that would best, I guess, be efficient for the humans, look at ways at which these different elements naturally would work together and, and or collaborate it's together. Not always easy for humans, it's right. just easy to understand. Right. So when you start patterning, thinking of, okay, well, this a chicken has this role in the ecosystem. Okay. So if we pop it in this part, yeah, this part of the system here, then it saves this work there and that work there and that work mm -hmm. there. So it's really, it's instead of applying physical labor, you're applying mental labor. Yes. Can you give the duck quote? The duck quote I can give. Um, there was a woman that, going back to Bill Mollison, the, the guy who started it all, yes. a woman was complaining about slugs in her garden. Slugs. Slugs. Okay. And he said, Madam, you don't have a slug problem. You have a deficiency of duck. <laughs> I've, I've heard him say the same thing about lantana, which is a, a tropical okay. nitrogen-fixing plant. He says, you have a deficiency of elephants, because okay. apparently elephants love lantana. So. Okay. Well, you know, we're going to continue this conversation. We do have to go to break. Uh, uh, please stay tuned as we come back and talk about permaculture. Thank you.